Well, greetings and indeed a hearty salutations. We are back with Inverted Tutorials. Oh, it's been a while, mate. It's been a while. The series is now known as... How do you do the things that you do? How do you do the mark command, mate? That's what this one's all about. So marking is... I mean, it, it's a daft name. It sounds like some guy called Mark just made the button and slapped his name on it. No, it's laser engraving. It's marking a surface. Laser etching for metal, wood, plastic, that kind of stuff. Uh, channel members, people who've joined the channel, can use the file that I'm using and follow along click by click. Uh, and if you think, oh, that sounds useful, mate, there's a join button underneath the video. Join the channel and you'll be able to get out my tutorial files, both past and moving forwards into the future. If not, you can just follow along just using your own file. But it's, uh, it's always nice to have the file. Uh, so, yeah, join the channel if you want that. Right, I did a video a few years ago showing how to do this manually using convert text to geometry. This mark command is basically doing the same thing as that, but just in one process. It's, so it's not it's nothing really that you couldn't do before. There's a couple of bits that you can, but I'll show you. All right, it doesn't have to be with sheet metal, but it works best with sheet metal. So you can pick up a part like this, create a sketch, drop it on a flat face. Uh, I'm going to try and keep this slow because I'm... My habit now is to go really fast. Been on YouTube too long. Uh, so I'm going to try and keep it slow. Right. So the mark command, it, it only works with text, sketch geometry, and that's it. So you can't engrave images unless you can figure out a way of converting images to lines. It ain't going to work. So it's just text and sketch geometry. So when you're in a sketch, go to text, draw out a text box, and then I'm going to pick a font that everyone should have. Uh, let's go with Cambria. That should be a standard Windows font size. Don't care. Uh, let's make it 5 mil. Sure, why not? And then for the text, I'm going to put in T3D. And then we'll make that justified in the center. Click hokey do. It's too big. <laughs> of course, it's too big. Oh, I, didn't, I didn't model this part, so I, I have no idea. Right, four. There we go. Right, and then I'm going to, just to make it nice and tidy, I'm going to horizontally constrain the... Wow, I'm in 4K, so the dot's really small. Uh, note to self, don't do 4K in the future. Right, there you go. That's now justified to the center. So Mark. Mark, our old boy, old chum, buddy, old pal, he's going to engrave this text onto that surface. What the command does, just so you kind of know yourself what, what's actually happening, it takes the outline of the font, converts it into lines, and then uses those lines to split the face. That's what Mark's doing. Now, you could do this in the past, but it's just all done in one button. Now, there's two ways you can mark, mark surface or mark through. They both behave very differently. So we'll start with mark surface. Select the text. Just click OK. You can only mark the face that it's on. Uh, and if you're thinking, well, where's it gone? Uh, I can't see anything. Right. If you can't see anything, go to Tools, go to Document Settings, go into your Display Appearance, and then make sure you've got model edges set to one color and then visuals, visual style set to shaded with edges because that's what it's, it's split the face. And if you can't see the edges, then you'll not be able to see anything. Uh, I think I still need to change it in here, don't I? Shaded with edges. There you go. So there's the, there's the edges. If you didn't have that on, you'd still be able to select the, the faces that it's done a split on. So there they are then. So it's done. So it's done, it's done a split face with a font. But it's quite good because if, if, you, if you've got like Adobe fonts, for example, a Creative Cloud subscription, you can get all kinds of weird creative fonts and do some fancy engraving. You're just kind of limited with pictures. You, unless you can sketch out a picture using sketch geometry, uh, you're quite limited. But uh, that's how the mark command works. Uh, if I undo that, uh, we'll do mark, mark through. I'll show you the difference between mark service and mark through. So go back into mark, select the text, and then choose mark through. When you're doing this, it's very different. It's going to engrave the top and the back because it's marking through the part onto the back surface, but it can't do it with the regular font. It has to convert the font into an SHX font, which you define in the style that I'll show you in a second. So when you click OK, it converts it into a sort of stick font, which looks really bad. It also knocks the justification out as well. So you might have to do some jiggery pokery, some tomfoolery to get that sort of aligned right. But you can see it's marked it through the back surfaces as well. So how do you define the type of font you get with mark through? Well, go into the managed, manage tab, that's the one, styles editor. And then you've now got a new set of styles for mark. Expand that 
and there's mark through and this is the font that it's changing it to when you're doing a mark through so that was iso cp but you can change it to be something else if you even recognize any of these fonts roman s for example uh, select save and close and any marks that you do now will go into roman s so let's undo that. I don't know if it, I've just undone it. Have I undone the font? Yes, I have, right? So we'll change this back to Roman S, save and close. Go back into sheet metal, mark it again, through. Yep, it's on through. Uh, and it actually looks the same. Uh, maybe it did. Maybe it did change with the style. I just didn't, I just didn't notice it. Let's go back into the styles editor and we'll change it to something. Times. I think times isn't a stick font. I think this is actually a font with body in it and engraved through the middle of the font. So we'll save and close that. Yeah, it did. It did update it, right? So it is updating with the style. That's cool. So yeah, that's not too bad, actually. I mean, you're quite limited with the SHX fonts, but you can experiment with the different types of fonts, and that's the result that you're going to get. So you can make your own styles if you want to. Within this, the Mark Surface style, for example, this is the one where it actually engraves around the font. You can change... I mean, you've, you basically surface and outline, that's it. There's no, there's no font settings because it's using the font that you had in the first place. But for the front face export layer, you can define what it's going to do when it exports this to a DXF file. So that's the name of the layer you're going to get in the DXF file. And you can also change the color. So you can maybe say that on a tangent line, or a tangent, cyan line, where a tangent from. And then the, also the line weight. So you can say make it a one mil thick line when it goes out with DXF. And the same for the back face. This is the, the options for that line weight. A layer name and color very limited in terms of styles but it's good I, I don't really i don't really want tons of options right so we'll, we'll engrave this again right so we'll delete keep the sketch do another mark go back into mark areas give that a click mark surface yep and then click okay and then we'll, we'll export this to a dxf and i'll show you what it looks like so to export it out to a dxf assume you know how to do this but it's a tutorial after all mate right so go to flat pattern uh, and there's the mark on the flat pattern. There he is. Right click the flat pattern node, go to save copy as. Uh, I've already done one, I did one as a test before, but we'll just delete that. Mounting bracket, DXF, click save. Yes, I want to replace that one. Uh, the file version, I want to change this to a 2018 DXF. Doesn't really matter, but I just like new stuff. And then that's output there. Open up AutoCAD, go to open, find your DXF file. Make sure you change files of type down here to DXF. Give that a click, open it up, and you should see uh, your mounting bracket flat pattern with the engraving there used uh, cyan and also there's the name of the layer that we defined in the style uh, for the line type lord give me a clue where where's autocad's line types <laughs> uh, to show line thickness <laughs> where's oh my god where's the button uh, is it in here uh, line weight which which button is it Oh, give me a clue. Are you kidding? Are you are you having my are you having me on? Is that the line weight button? It looks like a bunch of oars from a boat. You know, paddle oars. Oh, I thought that looks like. Anyway, it doesn't matter. All right, but there you go. Now it's got a thicker line. That was set to one mil. Uh, the other ones were set to 0.25, I think. Uh, but yeah, you go. And there's your DXF output into AutoCAD with that stupid button. That's wound me up too much. <laughs> Way too much than it should have done. Okay. So that's how the mark command works. That's really all you need to know. Now, what I want to do is just a couple of extra tips and tricks. Uh, you can stick around for these if you want to. I'm just going to take my time with these uh, and show you some uh, little neat things that I found out. So I'm going to delete the first mark. That was done on a flat surface. What if you want to engrave across a bend? You can't. Uh, you, you can't, right? So if you were to create a bit of text onto, onto here, right? If we were to write some text across that bend, Let's just go. Da, 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 da. Like, of course, you're gonna. Of course, but of course, how do I rotate this? In fact, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna move that. Oh, you know, it's, it's been a while, mate. It's been a while since I used Inventor. Right there we go. So we're gonna engrave it across that flat surface, going down across that there, folded face there. So if you do mark, select the text, and just mark surface, you can't pick the faces. It only engraves the face that it's on. So you're kind of a bit stuck. Not so, though. Not so. Here's, so if you need to do this, this is how you do it. Doesn't matter when you do the text, when you don't do the text. Ah, fuck, you know what? It probably does. I'm going to delete that. All right, let's get rid of the text. And to, to engrave across a bent face, what you have to do is unfold it. So 
Uh, I think it where's unfold. Uh, there it is. Right, unfold. Use that face as a as a reference. Unfold that bend, and that sort of temporarily flat patterns out that bend. Then you can do your your text across. No, I don't want to do. Oh, it's been a while. I mean, I, I've got so much to get used to again. <laughs> it's, it's, it's second nature, but some things are like catching me out that I wouldn't have done in the past. Right, text across here, and let's do T three D across bend. Uh, okay. <laughs> Why? Why? Why though? Do it all in one line. There you are. Right. Let's do it about there. Finish that sketch. Marked that surface, and it should go all the way across like that. And then refold that that bend, and it'll take it across with it. Now, whether it distorts that that letter there, it probably will. But mate, that's all you've got. That's really all you can do to engrave across a bend. But I don't think it looks too bad, actually. I don't think it's distorted the the letter that much. Okay. So there you go, that's how to do a mark across a, a curve, well, across a bent face. It is available also just in the regular part file template, so it's still there. Exactly the same thing. It, it works in exactly the same way, except it, it is still limited to flat faces. Uh, and if you need to sort of bend and unbend something, you can use, uh, I think it is it unwrap or bend part. Or, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, that's how the mark command works. Uh, and hopefully that was useful, mate. So if you want the file that I've just done it on, like I said, you can join up for the channel, get access to the files in my data vault, that I've called it, where all my tutorial files are. So thank you very much to all the channel members who have joined up so far and are supporting the channel. So they enabling me and get me excited to do more tutorials. Uh, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. So hopefully you did as well, mate. That is how do you do the mark command in Tech 3D. Thanks for watching. Get subscribed if you're not already, mate. And I'll see you in the next one. Doodles. Thank you.